Hi guys, so we're here, we made it to Millennial Acres Farms and we're gonna be kind of checking out a bunch of different areas on the farm today, but we are going to start here at the beehives uh, and the very nice Jerry Baumfeld is going to run us through how he does his hive inspections and teach us some of his wisdom he's gathered over the years. Let's go check him out. Quiet on the set. There's five, there's five colonies there that are, uh, are, are strong enough they're going to make it. They're busy. They're busy, busy. Start with basics. The preferable way to work is to always have the sun like in front of you so you don't make a great big shadow like this. Come on back here. Yeah. Find a spot where you, you're feeling kind of comfortable. Uh, you're not allergic. No. 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 no neither is there. This is. Well, of course, you know, just the sugar syrup yeah. to help these little guys nutrition their new babies. When you open up, just go nice and slow and easy. How often would you say you do inspections? Because we've heard kind of a couple different... Well, different yeah, timelines. Time you say, yeah. leave them alone, they know what they're doing, or well, check them every couple weeks, or... No. I think that uh, you've got to check them fairly frequently, yeah. especially in this time of the year. Right. Um, because what you'll see is, well, you don't really see anything. What you should see is you see should see progressive development. We open this one up. There's probably, I guess, maybe an honest five frames of bees. Yeah. And that's just about like where they should be based on the fact that there was only two frame, uh, frames of bees when we, when we took the winter wraps off. Right. Usually, my habit is, is I always pull a frame or two off the outside just to do nothing more than make some comfortable working space. Yeah. You do just a cursory brood check. You see what's happening here is, is they're starting to put a little bit of that food, you know, in some of the cells. Mm -hmm. But there's no real what you'd call action. So we get in closer to the brood frame. And so this is the same colony from before the winter, and then two frames survived the winter, and now they're kind of getting going again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, uh, there was, there was lots of bees and I added a fresh queen, actually it was a queen ah. that was in a, a failing colony of almond over next door here. Uh -huh. She had a couple and uh, she lost them. That's a good idea to keep notes in each one if you got that many. Well, you know, like, um, I quite often, well, I, I I don't spend as much time in this yard as I probably should. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's like everything else. I, I don't have much of a memory. <laughs> and so if I just kind of keep a bit of a, a running uh -huh. sort of a commentary, um, yeah. you know, things seem to be just a little more manageable. This one, you'll see that it's got a little bit in the bottom and there's quite a bit of pollen shown. So that's a good frame. That's a, you know, it's, a, it's not a bad frame. Here's our little queen. Oh yeah. Right there. yeah. And she's on a nice empty frame, nice, nice open frame. And just the tenor of the bees. You notice how they're, they're so nicely relaxed. Yeah, here's a good showing of brood. But I'm gonna put this frame back in because that's where our queen is. Yeah. You don't want to lose her, huh? Well, you know, <laughs> it's, oh shit, there's $50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what we love to see. Uh, Beautiful brood. The cat brood, yeah. Okay, so that means she's been functioning. You look over here, you'll see excellent larval development. And probably down around the bottom there, we would see some, yeah, you can actually track the progressive uh, development of the larvae. Oh yeah, you can definitely kind of see the pattern. Eh? That's right, yeah, yeah. You, you see the progressive development. Mm -hmm. 
That's cool because we've seen some capped ones, but I haven't seen any with the open larvae yet. And yeah. Well, then, do you look down here? You'll actually see some eggs. How incredible! That's amazing. That's cool, the larvae. Eh? <laughs> Jerry, what's this more black one right on the top of the frame here? Okay. Oh, just flew oh. off. Never mind. It was like a black, black. Bee just took off. It, it, almost, it almost looked like a flaw. A new orchard bee come yeah. for a little nutrition. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> they go in there, eh? Oh, they ah. really come, yeah. yeah. Blue orchard bee, cool. Mm -hmm. Or a mason bee. <laughs> Those larvae are cool. Yeah, they are super cool. That's awesome. So this is another beautiful frame. This is an emerger frame, and here we go right here. Can you see? Oh, uh, wow. Brand newbie. Just coming up. That is so Here's another cool. one that will be not too far behind. Oh, wow. This is hatching. Oh, and this guy right there. Yeah. Wow. And then oh, these yeah, ones, coming out. Yeah. these bulbous oh, ones here, yeah. those will be drones. And that's consistent with the, the drone. And when they're upside down like that. What they'll be doing here <laughs> is recently emerged. First order of business is all of these newly emerged. Once they go to work cleaning the cells. See, look here. See that? They're, they're transferring some food. You can actually see them do it. Wow. And here's a, a newbie that just come out. See how yeah. it looks kind of a little bit dusty? And dusty, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It'll take her a while to get her wings opened up. This is where we we will get a look at whether or not we've got any mites in here. You think those drone cells with the larval development and kick them out and if there's mites on there you'll see them hmm. scurrying. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah we just had to treat for mites the other day. And did you get a drop? Yeah. Did yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. Lots? Uh, not tons. I mean, we first saw them on the bottom board. We only saw about four or five. Okay, so that yeah. means you've got over 2,000 in your colony. Wow. Really? If you see any more than two, yeah. that's cause for concern. Okay. okay. And then? Well, the, the drop, once we put the strip in there, yeah. we probably had about, only about 20. Well, that's good. Or 20, yeah, 20 is most, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So here we are, we get to the outside of the box. Now what we see here is we see lots of pollen, lots of good food, you know, easy to get to, mm. and that's just perfect. Normally one and 10, I like to see as food frames. Yeah. Now there's brood on this one, and oh, yeah. quite a bit of brood there, and a little bit of new brood. So what we do with this one is we bring it inboard. Okay. Have your nutrition there and then all of your brood in the middle and then it makes it easy to, uh, to capture brood and it also gives the queen the chance to go back and forth, like, right. you know, like continuously mm -hmm. right. from now until, well, probably the middle of June and we'd like to see a second box on and at least 10 frames of brood right you know two with five and five mm -hmm. okay. and so at what point would you add that second box uh, as soon as you've got nine frames of bees showing nine for, okay yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of keeping notes in there mm -hmm. from your different. Oh. When you go yeah, it's, stuff, it's easy. It's a great to do, idea. You know? yeah. Like yeah. Uh, the only negative part is you could probably find a more efficient system. So when you take it off, it doesn't end up getting blown no, no, yeah. <laughs> away. Right there. So you notice here, this is significantly smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Significantly smaller, and also when you look at the front, it's wet with honey. Now, the reason for that is, oh, yeah. is that this is old honey, last year's honey. And what I've done is, is I've used a capping tool and I've broken this capping's wax on there. And when the sun comes out, it gets fluid 
and it runs down to the mm -hmm. bottom boards. And that's not too cool because what it does is, is it, it, is it traps bees, it kills them. I'm going to lighten this up and change that bottom board out. Bit of brood, lots of pollen showing here, but they're jamming the laying cells, the nesting cells, with with uh, sugar syrup, and so that takes. If if the cell has got something in it, honey, pollen, or nectar, not made into honey yet, um, the queen won't lay. Right. She mm -hmm. she won't lay, and she can't lay. So. We have, this is what you should be fairly vigilant with. And I guess the consensus there would be try and do everything you can to encourage the development of birds. Now, this is a, I'm looking very closely for our queen on this frame because I spotted some eggs been busy. But I don't see her there. How many eggs a day would you say the queen can lay? <laughs> she evidently can lay, has the potential for laying up to 2,000 eggs a day. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, busy girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, you know, when she's got the opportunity. Oh, there's tons in there. Yeah, you can see the little ones that look like a little speck of rice. Yeah. Them. Yeah. That's your egg. Yeah. You know. And that's, you know, like you, how you, you can actually, like, track your, the location of your queen, mm -hmm. you know, because the eggs will be, you know, like... Not first stage. Uh, I got one up my <laughs> Oh, you'll be up there? Oh, no. Yeah, somewhere up there. <laughs> oh, no. And there's our queen. Oh, there she is. There she is. Oh, right there. <laughs> wow. Is that unusual for her to be on the bottom board? Yeah, it is. Yeah. She shouldn't be there. Yeah. Um, what my thought is is that she possibly would be or could be uh, stuck, you know. <laughs> and then what I do with these bottom boards is I use what I call a tracking paste, beeswax, and canola oil. Mm. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, and what t what do you use this for? Well, I treat the bottom boards with this. Two things. It helps to stop any of that runaway honey from contaminating the bottom board. Mm. And it is a somewhat effective Mic control. So, do you ever use a screen between the first super and the bottom board? Yeah, but I hate the goddamn. Do yeah? <laughs> you? Yeah, that re was recommended to us, so we have a screen on ours. But. Well, the big problem is, is the winter, there's too much wasted space. Like, I have screens over here, screen bottom boards over here. And, uh, and you've got all that depth that they can't maintain the same ambient temperature. Right. And, it, and it's also, you know, poorly fitted, so it's not closed. Yeah. I mean, they're fine for the summer. And then, you know, you can you can actually, like, build them up so you don't get trapped, so you're not trapping bees in there. Mm. Like, this one's cut loose enough, so if somebody does go in for a little bit, they can always get yeah. out. Right. But a lot of them, there's great big gaps. And, all right. Just Mickey Mouse. I don't. I don't like them. That's yeah. interesting. So yeah. especially in the winter, you maybe would recommend switching to a solid. Well, that's what I do. Actually, yeah. I have uh, my my program is is I have two sizes. This is the shallow for the winter. Yeah. That's the deeper for the summer. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Same yeah. one. So we found our queen. Yeah, glad we found her on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. This is what you know, like like frequent inspections. Yeah. yeah. You know, like if, if you were only just once a week or every two weeks, I mean, you know, she would either be stuck in there or like you've lost that, that uh, production 
right. routine. Yeah. And it might not be the end of the world uh, because oftentimes, you know, the uh, when she does expire, the bees will start to draw queen cells. Mm -hmm. The negative part of that this time of the year is no drones. Yeah. You can hatch a queen, but there's nobody to service her. It's you know, game over. Right. Or get on the phone and start looking for <laughs> <laughs> looking for queens. <laughs> and I'm sure it'll kind of vary on each colony. But what sort of pace would you expect a healthy hive to work at in terms of building through frames? Because our busy, our, yeah, should be busy. Uh, we when this is uh, yeah we opened that one up. Yeah, this is this one. When we open this up, then you'll then you'll you'll see what you're supposed to see. So if our hive had four complete frames right now, would it take a, a month to get all ten done or two months? Oh no, no, no. She should fill those up, you know, if she's happy and healthy in two days. Oh, wow. Clean frame, no sign of eggs there yet, but that's only number nine. So those big protruding ones, those are the drone cells, is that right? Oh, those are queen cups. Oh, queen cups. Yeah. Ah. Nice larval development right in the center of the frame here. See how much pollen there is there? Oh, it's yeah. just jammed. Mm -hmm. And this is what you call pollen bound, you know, like, and for the most part, it looks like it's last year's pollen. It doesn't seem to be nearly as palatable as um, the new pollen that they carry in. All right. There's a drone. <laughs> and you can pick these up for a little visit. They don't have a stinger. They can't bother you. Uh -huh. And you notice the difference in the sound? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Well, there's there's something bothering them. Either the the queen is down in the bottom box, or I mean, they're they're not antisocial, but so then there's fresh eggs here on the on the outside of the circle. So there is a queen in here. Here she is. Oh, yeah. there she is. You betcha. Mm -hmm. So once we see that, and the fact that there is like lots of bees, mm -hmm. uh, as far as we have to go. Right? Yeah. We're not expecting honey this year being our first year. And oh yeah, no, no, yeah. you should see some honey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, people say. Sorry, well, I mean to harvest honey, for us to harvest honey. Yeah. No, no, you've got to take it out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, the reason for that is, is uh, if there's too much honey there or too much honey there, yeah. this is what you end up with. Right. right. And it's wasted anyway. It's just wasted because huh? they, they can't use it. Mm. So, no, you take all the honey you can. Like, mm. you know, you leave them food stores yeah. and then you go to supplementary feed, you know, like sure. as quick as there's no longer any natural. You can do that anytime. Right. right. This one was reduced down to, oh gosh, there wasn't... I don't think there was, there wasn't legitimately two frames of bees. Barely enough bees there to maintain uh, coverage on the, on the brood. They have to have bees on the brood or it won't emerge. And so if we get to the point where we're going to add honey supers on top of the brood boxes, yeah. what are your thoughts on queen excluders? I don't like them. Okay. No. They interfere with the movement of the bees. You know what you want to do is is that when your your first two uh, boxes are getting full of bees, yeah. is you want to split. You know you could start a another a, take a three or four frames of brood, yeah. get some fresh brood frames uh, blank frames in there. Keep her working, keep building brood all the time. Okay. Yeah. If the queen has got uh, space you know she'll just keep laying there's a honey frame that i haven't capped it 
Yeah. And you see, you just use your fingernail, just, just, you feel how oh, actual, yeah. how, how hard, hard that is. is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you see, there's just not very many bees. Yeah. But you see, there's you barely, the larvae there's coming. just barely enough bees to cover, you know, to cover that. Mm -hmm. Will bees go back and forth from hive to hive, or are they stick? No, no, they'll come over and they'll rob. <laughs> but they, uh, let's see here, ladyship there. This is all drone brood. There wasn't enough bees in there to cover <laughs> that, to, to incubate. Yep. And so that's all stillborn. And this is still in need of a little extra help. Mm. So how often would you say you do inspect these then? Well, you know, these ones probably at least once a week, maybe even more. I got a panic call from my wife one morning, and she said, oh, the RCMP is phone. They want you to come downtown. There's a problem with bees. So they go downtown, and sure enough, there was a big crowd, and the cops had closed off the street in between the... Well, I don't know if you're familiar with Prince George, but where the big Ramada Hotel is. The courthouse is on the other corner, and the big building's on the other side. And of course, there's people huddled in doorways and everything, and they got the, the street blocked off. And they drive in there, what seems to be the problem? Whoa! There's, there were people who thought they were being attacked by bees, and, <laughs> and I looked over, and the courthouse is about two or three blocks away. and. Uh, there's a guy, he had uh, six colonies on top of the roof. Uh -huh. And one of the colonies had swarmed. Yeah. And when it came down, it came off the beautiful big swarm. And it came down and landed in a little elm tree or something right on the sidewalk next to, in between uh, Tony Roma's where the st steakhouse and the Ramada Hotel. And hung in the tree, according to the flag girl. So that was fine until some rube came down the street and he had a shovel or a rake or something in his hand and he reached up and he whacked the goddamn limb and the thing went, went oh, poof down like this in a great big puddle and then a cabbie was about maybe three, four cars back. He started up and he drove right over top of the frickin' swarm. So of course, he probably killed the queen with that. And so all of these bees were up and confused. And he called a recess at a big court case. That's when that guy, <laughs> that, guy that was uh, uh, had killed that young fella from Fort St. John. Uh, not Fort St. John, but uh, anyways, one of the little smaller towns on the outside, he had, he had killed three or four, maybe even five street workers. And oh, yeah. he was at, they were, he was cut. So, of course, big, big media blitz and, you know, lawyers and everything <laughs> like that. So, these guys all come out on a, on a pause, a German pause, and there's these, all these bees are Everybody freaked. That's what they thought they were being attacked. Uh, run away and, you know, and all the rest of this kind of crap. And uh, so, yeah, I get down there and I looked at it. And I could see what the issue was, you know. The girl told me she'd seen the swarm and the guy had driven over it. And sure enough, when you drove down the, down in the, the blocked off area, there was these bees in puddles. Like, I guess he'd crushed the queen and every time the wheel rotated, there was another cluster of bees. Uh -huh. and, uh, and of course, then they're just all wandering, not Aimless coming thing. in looking to sting you yeah. or anything. Yeah. They're just wandering, like, like confused yeah. Yeah. and upset. So anyways, you know, I'm standing there looking very wise and <laughs> And I turn around, and here there's about four or five boom mics stuffed in my face. <laughs> you know, what's going on? What's going on? Are you, you know. <laughs> and you're the bee guy. Come to save the day. I'm oh the bee guy. God. came to the rescue. Yeah. yeah. So it, it had a certain amount of humor. <laughs> you know, it was actually pretty funny. But well, there's lots of uh, lots of knowledge and little tricks that go into it, isn't well, there? You know, like it's accumulated. You know, yeah. Yeah. like and and uh, I guess what would I have to say? I would have to say that 
the bees, your bees will tell you what they need. Yeah. And you ignore all of the useless fucking information that gets <laughs> shoved at you. You've got to have <laughs> pollen patties, you know. Yeah. Like, why would you have to have pollen patties when they're packing pollen? Yeah. Well, so-and-so says. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, we, we put them in the beginning because they didn't have any comb drawn or anything when we first got the package, yeah. but we haven't put any more in since yeah, that early. Doing great too. No, no, and, and when you put some in, yeah. just put a little cube. Mm -hmm. And when you go and check, if they're gobbling it up, you can sure as hell put some more in. Yeah. But you know, to flop one of those great big ugly <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We may that, have that done that the, that the first time. That was our first mistake. We didn't know. They go put in the pollen yeah. patty. So we put, put, this, patty we put yeah. this giant fucking thing in there. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even <laughs> touch it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, we posted something about it. Said, said, someone said, you know, break that into like 12 or something and put yeah, it in Yeah, no, no, just, in just use your pocket knife. Just cut a little cube. Just, yeah. you know, and yeah. flop it on top of the thing. If they want it. No, Dale Baker. Yeah. You got time for one more? Yeah. Yeah. So, here. This is something you see here. Here's just, this is not like fresh, but when you start seeing yeah. uh, accumulated condensation, yeah. that means you've got a problem with excess humidity. Right? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, or excessive humidity. Yeah. So usually what I do, like over the winter, is I use those feeder boxes and I use the uh, recycled coffee sacks. Okay. It's wicks. So when I lift the lid, I check the condensation. If I see any, I pull my sacks, get dry sacks, and then when I put the lid back on, I can't it like this so it doesn't close tight yeah. and it just lets the air move out. Okay, yeah. And that, as a rule, seems to work not too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, my hive to there. Ah, there you go. You have to have five hive tools. Five, because mm -hmm. you keep losing them? <laughs> One to use. <laughs> Four to find. <laughs> One for backup. <laughs> Two to lose. <laughs> And one to forget where the hell you left. Yeah. Probably just maybe step back a little bit yeah. and kind of get the story. Uh, you're probably going to get one in your hair. Yeah. Try not to freak. No, okay. it's all good. It's okay. Just... Is there one there? Yeah. It's right. Uh, yeah. A little water spray with a dab of vanilla in it. Yeah. And just wet them down a bit. I hate smoke. Yeah. Not yeah. because I I've don't like the smoke being the smoker, <laughs> but it's keeping the bloody things going. Right. Yeah. I mean, we spend more goddamn time chasing fuel and relighting it and trying to get it to go. This works way better. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just a little bit of vanilla in it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Old honey. Mm -hmm. And oh, you yeah. see that, like, it just... You happy? Yeah. Okay, so you go in and you get underneath that stinger. Okay, and you work it out. You can usually see which way it goes. One way will go easy, the other way it doesn't. There you go. Good. And here's your. Here's oh, your there he is. Uh, yeah, and you can see the length of the, wow. the bloody thing. Venom sac is still pulsing. Oh wow! Can you see this? Here, you, you can see the stingers coming out this way. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. It's still like, moving. Yeah, like yeah. very, very you're gently. A, you're getting quite a noticeable reaction. There might even be a second one there. No, it's just a scoop. Now I have Venolin uh, daubers. Do you? Would you like? me to put a bit on that um it feels very hot yeah it yeah. is just looking and it's quite yeah. quite red but my red. face does get really red 
like naturally from okay. it. Yeah. So I think yeah. I'd be fine. Yeah. 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 If you try and capture it by pinching, yeah. you you inject Squeeze the in. full yeah, yeah. load yeah. Yeah. Right. right in. Yeah. So it's really important. Even you know, you have to go to a side view or something like that. So just you know, yeah. so you can kind of you know get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you like want to scrape it out almost more than that's right. Yeah, yeah. you bet. <laughs> Good trick. <laughs> yeah. We both got our first sting. <laughs> Looks like you have to get your eyebrows done. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. After you get them threaded. <laughs> Do you want to go first? Sure. Gonna you gonna stay back a bit? Okay. My hair right yeah, here, yeah. like, is capturing. I'll do, um, I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll do this one. Yeah. Well, here, um, come, come around the back. Oh yeah, that might be. A I'll come do this one. You can stay. Okay. That will, uh, <laughs> and that will take, you know, a lot of the exposure away. Yeah. So there you go. Mm -hmm. That's a nice food frame. They're stacking. They're stacking. Um, yeah, it's interesting how even though they're all so close, one can be doing so much better than the other. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing people recommended for us: was get two hives so that you can compare them. But unfortunately, and that's really important because you compare one to the other, and you yeah. pick up very quickly. You know, with with a single one, you've got no way of gauging how they're doing. You right. know, like and what they're doing. Yeah, unfortunately we had to risk it. We could only get one package at the time that we got ours because they were You're lucky to get demand, that. So, yeah. And there we go. We got the nice brood. <laughs> Showing up. And that's at number three. And so that is always a good sign. Those brood cells look good. Oh, they look nice and healthy. There's some good larval development there on the outside. Quite a bit of pollen in that. Frame. And this one, you notice, uh, I don't know if you can see in there, but you see the bottom board is not nice and clean. A uh, clean bottom board is always a good sign of healthy, a healthy colony. If it's all junked up and it's dirty, there's usually some sort of an issue. Right. These bees are, oh gosh. Oh, they're fastidious housekeepers. You know, they cannot stand any unwanted trash in there. Yeah, that definitely looks like the healthiest one we've seen, doesn't it? They, they are, there's our beautiful queen that they have. Right. And look at, she's the blue queen. Oh, wow. I've never seen that before. Well, that was a uh, year before last, and last year was queen. Huh. And what's the reason for the, the different color? Uh, uh, every year has its own color. This year is white. Are you immune to being stung now? What's that? I said, are you immune to being stung oh, now? No, I get stung yeah. fairly frequently. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, Okay. Yeah. No, don't try nope, pinching nope, it. Nope. Just use the knife blade and just get it. No, nope, just nope. Okay. like you're going to slice. That's right. Just drag. Okay. Okay. Now try back the other way. Just sort of get the idea which way it kind of went in. And you get working against it. Okay. Then maybe we'll try this way, back and forth that way. And you got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Holy, that's a deep one. Yeah. Wow. Can you see the sack still pulsing? Yes, ever so slightly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've seen <laughs> Steph, Steph chop vegetables. You're a ballsy man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. no, no. Yeah, I mean, she's, you know, she's not going to slash. <laughs> okay, but it is important to get oh, man. underneath. Oh, oh. That one? Okay, he left. Okay. <laughs> I think my hair's Actually, a little too poofy. For what this. there will be now is there will be a, a pheromone on your on your fingers as right. a result of that. So just step back oh, okay. space to it. Yeah. Good. And you won't be nearly as attractive. Okay. Oh, because they'll smell that you've been right. stung. Yeah, and yeah, and you'll come. get uh you know, you get three or four just coming 
homing right in on that spot. Right. Ah. Just oh, like, so just scary. like that. Interesting. Yeah. So if you get stung, would you recommend going and kind of washing your hands if you got stung on your hands? And uh, actually, the thing to do is if you've got grass handy. Yeah. Just grab your pick some and. Just Go and grab a handful of clover or, or whatever. Steph, just rub that all over your face. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Oh, take it. You know, grab a bunch. You know, and, uh, and just. Interesting. Yeah. Ah. There you go. Of these tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if if you had to shut her down and. And go for help every, every time, time you, you got, got stung. Yeah. You, get you wouldn't oh, probably yeah, wouldn't get very much done in the course of a day. Yeah. Martha's father is a beekeeper, a beer, bee breeder in <gasps> Germany. Oh, oh wow. that's super cool. cool. Yeah. Oh you like invited like the first um, bees that like they're like mites free yeah. for two years now, and no one in the world has done that yet. Oh. So yeah. Very cool. cool. Hopefully he's going to send us some queens. Yeah. <laughs> some German queens. Was there any, any other questions we had or anything we wanted to know? I think we covered a lot more than we oh, yeah. thought we were going yeah. to too, so that's great. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thank you so uh, much. Oh yeah, we appreciate you taking the time to show us. Oh, yeah. no, no. Come yeah. over and uh, I'll get the formula for the, the marking schedule. Yeah, I'm curious about that. That's it for this week. Thanks so much to Jerry Baumfeld and Millennial Acres Chickens for hosting us today. It was amazing to learn so much about how you do your hive inspections. And we're going to take all that knowledge that we learned today back home to our own hives. We'll see you guys next week.